What turbocharger should I buy? This is another one that is extremely debated, but in its essence is extremely simple. So the turbocharger is just an air pump and all pumps are rated by how much they can flow. And so how much air you can move is directly related to how much horsepower you can make. So when you go to buy a turbo, you just buy what will reach your horsepower goal. This is why the goal thing is so important. It's like, do I want a thousand horsepower or do I want 400? Because if I want 400 horsepower, I just need a turbo that can support that. And typically the closer the turbo size is to the goal of your horsepower, the more responsive it will be. People will say, oh, how responsive, how laggy. Well, every turbo is going to have some sort of lag. They're not, they, you know, regardless of, of what it is, it's going to have some sort of lag, but whether the lag is, you know, two seconds for full spool up and you're trying to make 1500 horsepower, or it's going to be a half second and you're making 350 horsepower. It really just depends on the size of turbo. So you can use uh, some of these guides on Garrett Motion's website. Uh, to see how much horsepower they are rated for, what per per specific turbo you're looking for. And uh, another little side thing, the AR, how the AR ratio of your turbine housing, people, this seems to be a highly debated thing, but really there's math around it that you can just go look at and decide what you need to get on a, a turbine housing. And typically the turbine housing just limits the overall flow of a turbo. For example, if you find a turbo like this that's rated at 550 crank horsepower, you won't get 550 crank horsepower unless you get the largest turbine housing that is offered for that turbo. You can see right here the 0.92 AR and the 0.49 AR, the exhaust flow is dramatically different between the two. So your, your response will increase but you will not be able to get the maximum amount of that turbo unless you get the largest exhaust housing. So typically when you see like two or three options for a turbo's exhaust uh, turbine housing, you wanna get the biggest if you want to use all of the capability that turbo has. So if a, if a turbo is rated for 600 horsepower and you get the smallest AR housing, don't expect that turbo to make 600 horsepower. It's gonna make like, you know, 20% less than that or, or whatever it is in flow difference. So really the way I like to look at it is buy the turbo that fits the application that you want for, for flow, how much horsepower it can make and get the biggest housing you can that is offered for it. That's not always the best case, but that gives you the least restriction on the exhaust side, the least amount of back pressure. You're letting the engine breathe when it has a bigger uh, bigger turbine housing and turbine if you go with a bigger turbo. So that's just a, a guideline that you can look at. Obviously there's people that have really good success with the smaller smaller stuff and that's more of just a spool up of uh, efficiency kind of thing. Um, spool up is, is definitely relative. If you want a fun snappy car, go with the smallest turbo that will reach your power goal. If you just love big power and hitting it hard on the freeway, doing roll races, stuff like that, bigger turbos are okay. There's nothing wrong with a bigger turbo other than if you are really a lag stickler, if you don't like waiting for boost to come in and you don't like that response delay, go smaller on the turbo and you'll be happy. Uh, if you only want 400 horsepower, just only buy a turbo that makes roughly 400 or 20% more than 400. Um, so that's my spiel on that. Uh, there's a lot that goes into this and you can research a little bit more on your own. And, but basically you just buy the turbo that fits the horsepower number that you're looking for. It's, it's about that simple. Uh, if you're not really trying to get every last ounce out of it and go into radio versus the world or something like that.